he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. What people sometimes fail to understand is often preachers preach to themselves. Now, I never do that, but other guys do, okay? But I believe wholeheartedly a little bit of that is going on right here. It's wonderful that Paul is in prison and he's still thinking of others. But his confidence isn't in them. His confidence is for them, but not in them. So he must have the same kind of confidence for himself in his own situation. You see, his confidence is in God. Being confident of this very thing. The word confident there is pitho, and it means to be convinced, fully persuaded, to trust, to believe. To be convinced, fully persuaded, to trust, and to believe. Being confident of this very thing that he. Being confident of this very thing that he. The apostle's confidence, again, is not in himself. It is not in other people. His confidence is in the ability of God. His confidence is in the faithfulness of God. His confidence is in the power of God and the promises of God and the goodness of God. You see, my family, we can have confidence in God independent of the situation we find ourselves in. No matter what, you can always have confidence in God. You can have confidence in God when things are going well, and you can have confidence in God when things are going terribly. You can have confidence in God when you are on the mountaintop, and you can have confidence in God when you are in the valley. You can have confidence in God when you are riding the crest of the biggest wave, and you can have confidence in God when you wipe out. I'm preaching better than your amen, and I'm just telling you, thank you. Appreciate that. One of the many reasons that you can have complete and uninterrupted confidence in God is because nothing you ever go through takes God by surprise. You got to think about that. Nothing you ever go through takes God by surprise. He knows the end from the beginning. That's why he's the alpha and the omega. That's why he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Before you ever went through tragedy, trauma, trial, or tribulation, he knew. He knew you'd go through it. For some of us, he knew that you would fail and fall. For others, he knew that you would be treated unjustly and that circumstances would befall you that were beyond your control. But there is never an event that takes place in your life to which the Lord says, Oh, myself, I didn't see that coming. Before you ever had a problem, before you ever said, oh snap, or whatever you said, before you ever hit that speed bump or that brick wall, before you ever encountered that devastating loss, before you ever disappointed yourself, before you ever got discouraged by someone else's lack of responsibility, before you ever got blindsided by the schemes of the wicked one, before you ever got to the place where you felt like I'm done, God knew. Didn't take him by surprise. He wasn't throwing a cosmic curveball. He knew. Listen to me. He knew in detail. Psalm 139 verse 16 says, you, Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And in your book they all were written. Watch this. Ready? The days fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them. In other words, here's what the psalmist is saying. He's saying, before I was formed in my mother's womb, before I had days, you, O oh Lord, knew what would be in them. He knows your thoughts before you think them. He knows your words before you speak them. He knows your days and your nights before you live them. The omniscient God knows Everything you face and everything you feel before it ever happens. And he still calls you. And he still equips you. And he still loves you. And he still anoints you. And he still appoints you. And he still gives you unimaginably wonderful gifts. Look at this. He knows what's going to happen here. 
and he still gives you gifts here. Check out Romans chapter 11 and verse 29 where the Bible says, for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. No disclaimer, no fine print. 2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 29 says, For you have spoken, and when you grant a blessing to your servant, O sovereign Lord, it is an eternal blessing. The Lord does not revoke his blessing. The Lord does not revoke his purpose for you. The Lord does not revoke his gifts towards you. And nothing can ever separate you from the love of God which was demonstrated in the life and death of the Lord Jesus Christ. No matter what you go through, no matter what you face, no matter what you feel. Here, here's why. Everything we receive from the Lord is by grace. Grace, again, being unmerited favor. In other words, there's nothing that you and I can ever do to earn or deserve or merit or achieve God's love, God's blessings, gifts, opportunities, and favor. And if that's true, therefore, there is nothing you and I can ever do to undeserve or unmerit or unearn God's love and blessing and gifts and opportunities and favor. Here's, here's the big idea that undergirds this entire series, and it is no matter what. No matter what you go through, no matter what you face, no matter how you feel, God is not done with you. Therefore, you are not done. Take a look at Philippians 1.6 with me again. It says, being confident of this very thing. If you're not confident of anything else, you can be confident of this. Being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you, will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. I want you to notice the detailed specificity of this statement. Being confident of this very thing. What very thing? That he who has begun a good work in you will complete it. So the question simply becomes this. We'll end this chapter with the following. Has God begun something in you? Has God begun something in you? Is there evidence? Can we dust your life for God's fingerprints? May I be so presumptuous as to answer the question for you? Because the answer for every single one of us is yes. It's yes. There's evidence. It's glaring. We, we don't need to break out the magnifying glasses and the microscopes here. We don't, we don't need a, you know, a junior CSI investigation kit. We, we don't need that. We don't need black lights. We don't need little fabrics and little plastic bags. We don't need that. For, listen, the evidence is glaring. For some of us, God began a work in you in generations past. In your grandparents and in your parents. For others of us, we can see the evidence of God in our childhood or in our teen years. For some of us, we felt his presence. We didn't even know what it was. We didn't know what we were feeling. But, but now, in the rearview mirror, we can see it was God's presence there with us in a very dark hour of our lives. Others, we did something wrong, or we didn't do something right, or we did something right for all the wrong reasons. And we felt remorse, and we felt regret. We felt guilty. Listen to me carefully. That was God. That was his spirit. The mere fact that you are here today, it's not a coincidence. It's evidence that God has started something in you. And God always completes what he starts. Say that with me today. God always completes what he starts. Everybody now, ready? God always completes what he starts. Being confident of this very thing. That he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Listen to me carefully. Be completely confident. God is not done with you. Therefore, you are not done. Put your Bibles and your outlines away and let's pray. I'd like everybody to close your eyes. 
I'd like everybody to lock their heart and their mind in on the Lord Jesus Christ. Just lock in on God. I want to pray for two groups of people this morning. First group of people, you are in it right now. You have very recently felt overwhelmed. Very recently you have, feel, you have felt like washed over with hopelessness. The discouragement for you has been thick. And maybe it's about a specific event or a specific relationship or a specific occurrence or, or maybe it's just in general. You felt like giving up. I don't know what the specifics are. I don't know what you have felt like that about. But the Lord does. He knows. And you are anything but alone. Today I want to pray with you. If you have been in that place of hopelessness, felt like things aren't going to change and you're not going to change. It's been hard for you. Then right where you are, with everyone's eyes closed, nobody looking around, I'd like you just to lift a hand towards heaven as we pray. Just lift, if that's you, lift a hand towards heaven as we pray. Sure, a whole bunch of us, of course. Father, I pray that over the next several weeks to come, we'll learn. That we'll learn from your word how to come out the other side better and stronger and more Christ-like. But even now, even this morning, even right here in your presence, I pray that you breathe upon us and that in each heart and mind of every hand that is raised, that there would be an infusion of courage, an entrance of courage, that there would be encouragement that comes from you, Lord. I pray that hope arise within us right now by your Spirit. And that we leave this place today having confidence, being fully persuaded, trusting, and believing that because you are with us, everything is going to be all right. I thank you for it. We receive it by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Put your hands down. Everybody keep your eyes closed. Second group of people I'd like to pray with today is if you're here and you have never personally given your life to Jesus Christ. You have never personally prayed a prayer from your heart through your lips in which you've said something like, Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I give you my heart. I give you my life. You are my Lord. Forgive me of everything I've ever done wrong. Give me a fresh start, a new beginning. You've never prayed a prayer like that before. Hey, listen, I know that if you've never done that, and again, I'm not talking about your, you know, your family religion or denomination or your church attendance. I'm talking about you and the Lord. If you have never yet given your heart to Him, I get it. You know, I get it the bouts that you have with hopelessness. I get the discouragement. I was there. And before I had the Lord to really go to, I really did have nobody. So today, listen to me. If you've never given your heart to Him, today's your day. Don't, don't wait another minute. Or, or maybe you're here today and you would say, hey, John, you know, I have. I, I prayed a prayer once. But then somewhere along the line, I, I walked away from God. I did like the prodigal son, and I turned my back, and I walked away. And as it stands right now, I may have prayed a prayer years ago, but I'm living life any old way I want. And it's sure not working. So today, I want to turn around and I want to come back home to the Lord. I, 
I want to rededicate my life. Well, listen. If you've never before given your life to Him or you need to rededicate, I just believe today's your day. There is nothing that can give your life hope like knowing that you know that you know that your life is right with God. So with every eye closed, if you would say to me, hey, John, I need to do that today. That's, that's me. I need to give my life to Jesus. I need to rededicate and come back home. If that's you, I want to pray with you. While no one else is looking, while everyone's eyes are closed, if that's you, would you let me know who I'm about to pray with by doing the following. If it's you, just lift up one hand right now. Do the same. Just lift up one hand to God right now if that's you. Lift it up. I see your hand. That's good. You can put it back down after you lift it up. Real quickly, lift it up. Wave it at me. Put it right back down. Good. Anyone else? Do it right now. With all of our eyes closed and our attention firmly focused on the Lord, I'm going to ask that everybody pray this prayer with those who are doing it for the first time. Say this with me today with all of your heart. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus. And with my heart, I believe. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died for my sin and rose from the dead. Today I give you my heart. I give you my life. Thank you for accepting me just as I am. I'm coming home to you, Lord. Thank you for forgiving me and healing me and making me whole. I will live for you just as I pray this prayer by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Now look up here with me for just a moment because today we're doing something new. If you just prayed that prayer for the very first time or for the first time in a long time as a prayer of rededication, we have an area for you set up right after service. I'll head over there. Some of our elders will head over there. and Some of our staff will be there too. It's, it's to my left and your right. There's just a couple of high top tables there. And we've got an area in which we want to just spend a minute or two with you. We've got some gifts to give to you. We've got a New Testament. We've got a brand new DVD that I just shot talking about how to now, walk with the Lord, how to study your Bible, how to pray, how to grow in your relationship with God. And then our new community groups are all there as well. One of our guys or gals will be there and uh, they'll take down just a little bit of information because they want to follow up with you. We want to help you, really, really help you take next steps in your walk with him. So that, that's what that area is called, next steps. So right after church is over in just a moment, if you prayed that prayer, if you raised your hand or didn't raise your hand and prayed, Head on over there, and we'll see you over there. Uh, Let's just do a couple of announcements together before we dismiss. First of all, we've got the Hey, I'm Here cards. If you are here for the first, second, or third time, please take a moment, fill out the card completely for us. Uh, If you've got a prayer request, put it on the Hey, I'm Here card, and you can drop those in the little brown boxes as you exit, unless it's your first time. If it's your first time, fill it out and bring it out to the information desk in the lobby. We've got a gift for you there, uh, a TPCC travel mug and some other stuff just to say thank you for worshiping with us today and we look forward to seeing you again. Got a bunch of announcements. The first one is this, ready? This afternoon at 4 p.m. we're doing another thing that is brand new and we call it Connect. And it's just a time together. We'll be together for about an hour where you can come and kind of get an orientation to Turning Point Community Church. If you're new or even if you've been around for a little while and you want to meet some new people and hear some things about the church, come on out at 4 o'clock. Child care will be available. You'll get to meet our elders and our staff. We'll all be there. Uh, Uh, We'll have some finger food and some coffee, and it'll be a nice time. So join us at 4 o'clock this afternoon for Connect. Saturday is our next Refresh Outreach, and it's going to be our biggest one ever. We are giving out 1,000 bottles of cold water uh, to the soccer players out at Burl Huffman Sportsplex. So we are going to invade all of those soccer fields at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. If you want to be a part of it, meet us out there at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. If you've been on a Refresh Outreach before and you've got your t-shirt, just go on out there and meet us. We need as many people as possible. We'd love to get a thousand bottled waters out 
bottles of water out in English uh, in about 45 minutes if we can. So it's going to be another outreach burst. Um, Join us out there. If you haven't been on one yet, they're, they're a blast. They're a lot of fun. Sign up at the information desk today and join us for that. On the 23rd, September 23rd, we will have our next Big Grill Burger Sunday. So that means on the 23rd, immediately following this service, we'll, we'll tear some chairs down and put some tables up. The guys will be grilling for us, and we'll have some great burgers and just a meal and a fun time together. One other thing that we don't necessarily have a slide for, but you received on your way in today, inside your bulletin, a card listing all of our community groups. They start today. This week is our first week of our new semester of community groups. We've got some great new groups, some wonderful flourishing groups that have been around for a while. I encourage you to take a look at that card, call the leader, find out all of the uh, specific details, and be there this week. It's a place where, you know, on Sunday mornings, we come together, uh, we hear the word. It's wonderful to worship in the presence of God together. But when we get into small groups, that's where we can really do the one another's of the Bible. That's where we can pray for one another and care for one another and share with one another. So please, I encourage you, if you want to get all that you can out of being a part of Turning Point Community Church, be a part of a community group. Stand with me, if you will. And now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, who will also do it. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We'll see some of you over at Next Steps over here. We'll see others of you at 4 o'clock this afternoon.